Hello and welcome to another installment of questions from viewers and this is easily going to be one of my favorite questions so far so if you guys want to ask me a question then just jump over to speakpipe.com slash hsg and you'll potentially see it featured in its own episode in the future like this one could be gaming could be Gran Turismo could be channel related could be a question maybe you've always had about the automotive world or just some advice about something so jump over there and give me a question and without any further ado let's get into this question which once again is from a returning asker if you will and that is ness hello again mike so my second question for this series is basically in regards to torque so many people on the internet have tried to explain the difference between horsepower and torque to their best abilities but the audience still gets confused on what the difference is the torque wrench being used is a popular example so as a fan of torque yourself how would you describe the difference to your audience? So there is our question. The difference, the fundamental difference, if at all possible, between power and torque. What is the difference between the two in practice? How could you actually wrap your mind around the difference? If you're not too sure, it can be a bit of a grey area for many petrol heads, especially younger ones. You might throw out those words like pound feet and newton meters and horsepower and third starker or PS, but you might not really know what they are. And then you start getting into stuff like RPM and power curves and torque curves. What does all this stuff even mean? Well, first things first, because this is one of my favorite subjects, as you might be able to tell, let's get the biggest inaccuracy out in the open, and then out of the way forever. Because doubtless you've heard somebody say this before, you may have even said this yourself before, because you heard somebody else say it, maybe somebody who you thought knew what they were talking about, or who seemed to be respected. You will often hear it said, power is how fast you hit the wall, torque is how far you push the wall when you hit it. That is completely wrong. Always has been, always will be. And the reason why is simple. It's just totally wrong. It's a completely different analogy. That's more like the analogy of the difference between speed and mass, because if it was an analogy for that, you'd kind of be correct. Except this isn't speed versus mass, it's power versus torque. So let's break it down, and also I want to give you a way that you can actually, after this video, or even while you're listening to the video, prove this kind of mini theory in practice for yourself and i'm hoping that this will help you to understand it to remember it and maybe to help somebody else in future and as ness kind of alluded to maybe even explain in my car review videos especially my real car reviews in beards and cars road tests why i talk about talk so much and why i like it more than horsepower do this if in your home you have a door with a, a round doorknob on it or even just a normal handle, but a doorknob is ideal because of its shape. I want you to go up to that door and follow along with me. I want you to grasp the doorknob or the handle and imagine in this allegory, you are the engine of the car. Your arm, your wrist, your forearm in particular are the drive shaft, if you will. What transmits that rotational force, power, energy, speed, etc. from the engine to the road wheels. The doorknob is fairly obviously the driven wheels. So let's say you've got two of those in a rear wheel drive car, you've got four in an all wheel drive car, but just imagine that that doorknob or that door handle, if you don't have a round one, is the road wheel. Now there are two different approaches fundamentally that you could take to twisting that doorknob. And what I want you to imagine here is two different types of doorknob. First of all, Let's imagine that that doorknob can continuously rotate. Now, probably, unless yours is broken, it will have a left and right limit. But let's just imagine that it doesn't. Now, if I asked you to spin that doorknob as quickly as you possibly could, of course, again, factoring in that you can only go so far with the twist of your wrist, but spin it left and right as quick as you can and imagine that it's going around in one direction, like a car's wheel. Spin it as fast as you can using your hand and wrist. That is power. Now you'll notice that certain things, especially in comparison to talk in a moment, are very specific to that. So for instance, you're not necessarily putting a huge amount of effort into this, but you are putting a lot of speed into it. You're rotating your wrist and rotating that handle very quickly. Likewise, power will often come very high in your RPM range your revolutions per minute. Your wrist 
is having a lot of RPM in effect. You're spinning it really quickly. And if you were to measure the quote-unquote road speed, if you will, that that doorknob would be doing if it were a wheel, it would be going very quickly. So what's the result of that power? Well, it's a hell of a lot of top speed. Not necessarily acceleration, because yes, you get up to speed quickly, but it's more about that top-end rotation. That is the horsepower. That's what it allows you to do. Spin that doorknob real, real fast. And the more rotational power you got, the quicker it's going to go. That is power. It's the amount of literally work that the engine can do. Work being speed. Now I want you to stop if you've been doing it the whole time. <laughs> and now do something a little bit different. Imagine now that instead of that, that same doorknob is rusted. So it can barely turn at all, if at all. Now I want you to rotate that doorknob. Not necessarily as quickly as you can, I just want you to get it moving. I want you to get it unstuck and rotate it as efficiently as you can. Are you going to grasp that doorknob and spin it as frantically as you possibly can? Well, of course not. You are going to slip. And that is something which can happen in a mechanical sense. However, to do it correctly, you're going to get nice and hunkered down, you're going to have a firm grip on that handle, and you're going to rotate it very slowly with a lot of power or a lot of torque in reality. And torque is literally twisting force. Now, you'll notice that much like, for example, a diesel car, all of that twisting force is happening at a very low speed, a very low RPM, if you will. Your wrist and your forearm is not really turning that quickly, if at all, but you are exerting a tremendous amount of twisting force on that doorknob to the point where eventually it will break free. Or in the case of a car, where the wheels are hopefully not rusted in place, it gets those wheels moving very effectively because you've got a load of twisting force without the engine, in effect, needing to rev really high. Now, at its core, that is the fundamental difference. Torque is the twisting power that the engine can apply. It doesn't need to be going fast, but it gives a load of results. Horsepower, brake horsepower, Fergstarker or PS or whatever unit of power you want to discuss is the first one. Rotating that doorknob real fast and getting a really high top speed out of it. Now you'll notice that I mentioned about how fast you were rotating your wrist or the drive shaft in effect at the same time. And that nicely alludes to the very weird and wacky world of power and torque curves, which can look really weird and not make much sense unless you know what you're looking at. Usually you'll have an X and a Y axis with one color graph going up and down, usually very quickly and then dropping off. And then the other power curve or the other curve, which will be power, will usually work its way up to a peak and then drop off soon after. Torque will spike very early and drop very quickly and power will work up to a certain point, usually over more of a curve and then have a drop off after, but not as steep of a drop off as the torque. Now with some engines that will be different, but that's the general idea. So why is that? Well, think back to our analogy. If I asked you to move that rusted doorknob, you're not going to try and spin it as quickly as possible. It all comes in at low twisting speeds. So likewise, with, you know, a, a low revving, torquey diesel engine, you don't need that many RPMs to get your best torque. And in fact, much like what I mentioned earlier on, if you try and put a huge amount of RPMs into it, you're just going to slip your grip on the handle. Now that, in effect is why a stupidly torquey car like a, a Viper or a Touareg V10 diesel can actually easily damage its components over time. Because if I were to, for instance, take my old Touareg V10 and put that 550 pound feet of torque through that rear diff at like four and a half thousand RPM, launching it like a rally car every time I drove it, well, the diff is going to eat itself alive. Because yes, the engine can cope with that amount of torque, but the teeth on the gears in the transmission and the final drive, which is part of the transmission, well, they can't cope with that. It's just going to strip all the teeth off the gear and ruin it. So likewise, that's kind of how the torque and the power curve work. Just like when you're twisting it really fast, well, your best work is going to happen when you're twisting it really quick. You're getting the most speed out of it. 
working all the way up that power curve to your peak ability, and then dropping off when you get tired, in effect. Then, with the torque, it's the opposite. You get your best work done nice and low, nice and slow, and then if you try and spin it too quick, you're not going to get as much twisting force, so it will drop off on the power curve, and drop off very quickly, just like the torque of an engine. So, fundamentally, that is the meat of this video. So, you could click away now if you want to, because that is the answer to the question, and I'm hoping that for those who were maybe confused by the subject, especially the fundamental difference between power and torque, I'm hoping that that will have explained it and described it a little bit more kind of realistically for you so that you can imagine that scenario again in future and kind of visualize what the reality is between the two rather than just it being an abstract number. Now the reason why I prefer torque is simply because it's more accessible. Just like with that immense amount of strength that you can twist the handle with, well even though you're applying a lot of force, you won't necessarily tire yourself out that quickly. Yes, you need a lot of forearm and, you know, muscle strength, but you're not going to be panting and sweating anytime soon unless it's literally never going to move. If you spin that doorknob as quick as you can, you're going to start sweating. Likewise, in a normal road car, if you've got a load of torque, like in my Jag or the Touareg or whatever, well, the engine's not working that hard. It's barely turning over, maybe 1,500, 2,000 RPM at the most, but you're getting a load of twisting force out of it. And if that happens, it means that quite literally, the engine doesn't have to work that hard, but the results are a huge amount of actual get-the-job-done torque, which of course is what I like to say in those reviews. Whereas on the other hand, if you compare that to an engine which is completely the opposite, a Honda VTEC is a perfect example, like a, an S2000 with some modifications, for example, up around 10,000 RPM. Well, you could get 250, 300, 350 horsepower without turbos or supercharging out of that engine. But your torque is very low in comparison. And it's very similar to a, for instance, high-performance motorcycle, something like a Kawasaki Ninja or a Suzuki Jixxa. They've got great amounts of power, especially for their size, but not very much torque at all. If you were to, for instance, try and drag a trailer or a caravan with a motorcycle, it doesn't matter how much power it's got, you're not going to pull it anywhere. You're just going to spin up the rear wheel because it doesn't have torque, so it can't get that work done. It can only accomplish speed, which is what the bike is all about. It doesn't have that much weight to move. It's all about those high RPMs and going faster and faster. That, again, is a perfect in practice example of how you can use torque versus how you can use power. As a general rule, power gives you speed and performance, especially high end, whereas torque gives you that lower end launch off the line, and it gives you that kind of towing, dragging, or pushing ability that something like a big heavy pickup truck needs, or that like a train would need, or a tractor, or something like that. And finally, on this particular subject, there are two or three types of engine in particular which kind of buck the trends in certain ways, and that's why you'll sometimes hear me referencing these vehicles as having a quote, different way of delivering their performance. That's something which you've heard me say before, probably, if you've been around on the channel, and these would be engines that I'm describing such as Wankel Rotaries, or a gas turbine, or even an electric motor, because they still have all of the same kind of, you know, RPM, horsepower, and torque outputs that any kind of engine is going to be putting out, but they deliver those in a very, very different way. And it's not just about the engine, of course, you've got transmission, etc., but fundamentally, they have their upsides and downsides. So a rotary engine is very similar to a motorcycle or a VTEC, really high revs, really high power, great top-end speed, good acceleration as long as the vehicle is very light, but you would never want to put like a, a twin rotor wankel engine into like a Dodge Ram. It's just not going to work. You'll spin up the wheels, you won't be able to tow very much, and the acceleration, chances are, won't even be that good, even with something like 700 horsepower, because the torque just isn't there. Then you have an electric motor. Electric motors are an absolute wild card because you get 100% pretty much of your torque from zero RPM. That's one of the reasons why you don't usually have multiple gears with an electric car, because... As I've mentioned on the channel before, a transmission or a gearbox is a torque 
multiplier. So the entire purpose of the gearbox is to take the natural amount of torque that the engine is producing. So once again, take the Touareg as an example, 550 pound feet, and then make that even more by the time it reaches the road wheels. So a Touareg is not put in 550 pound feet of torque to those four wheels. It's put in way more than that every car is so a dodge viper you know you're not putting 600 pound feet to the wheels it's way more than that going to the rear wheels thanks to the gearbox multiplication as with any vehicle where an electric motor gets crazy is because you put out so much torque and more importantly instantaneously you would chew up your gearbox in no time at all unless it was like a tungsten titanium kind of transmission and also because of the way it delivers its torque and delivers its power, it's just not necessary to have those gears either. The most important thing really for an electric vehicle is the final drive ratio, because acceleration tends to take care of itself thanks to their massive amounts of torque, like a Remac, for example. The real magic of making a good, fast electric supercar or motorcycle is actually to set up the gearing to make the most of the power rather than the torque, because electric motors tend to peak really fast, but then at high speeds they get really hot, they waste battery power, and they start to become really inefficient. So if you can stretch out that gear, let the torque give you acceleration, let that gearing really allow the power and the RPM because electric motors actually do have really high RPMs, like 12,000 sometimes, like a rotary or equivalent VTEC engine would have, and that allows you that great top-end speed, such as a, a Remac Concept 1 at like 220 miles an hour. The way that these engines deliver that power, deliver that torque, and at the RPMs which they do it, is what I'm referring to in these videos when I condense that down simply by saying the way this engine delivers its performance. That's what I'm talking about. So I'm hoping that for at least some of you, this has shed some more light on why I love torque, why I'm not particularly interested in power. After all, top end speed means very little in daily life, whereas acceleration can be used. And certainly having lower RPM saves fuel. You've got the towing ability, etc., And having crucially an engine that's never working that hard is never a bad thing for reliability and components. So altogether, I hope this has shed light on that for you. And even if... Obviously, you're not going to hear this if you only watch the first explanation up to nine minutes or so anyway, but I'm hoping that for those of you who are trying to wrap your head around the difference between power and torque, it's helped you out. But overall, that's it for this question. And of course, as I said, jump over to speakpipe.com slash HSG to send in one yourself. And until next time, I'll see you then. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.